Ricky. <laughs> the Chancellor. Are you doing Long Time No Talk or C? The last time was what, Atlanta? I think so, yeah. So like a year ago. Over a year ago, man. Yeah, a, lot, a lot's happened since then. Uh, really? The, the world has nearly ended since then. And we, we, we've knocked out a, another season of American Gods. So some positives and maybe not so. Which God should we be blaming for everything that's gone on this thing, the past few months? Um, we should be blaming all of them. They, they, you know, because we're, we're the first to praise them when everything goes well. We sh they should be the first to, they should all get it when it all goes wrong. Um, but uh, I just want to say I wish uh, everyone the best out there. I hope everyone's staying safe around the world. Um, lots of love to all the doctors, nurses, people on the front lines, people who are working out there in this current climate. Um, peace and love to all your families and friends. I'm in California myself, so big love to our firefighters who are trying to keep us safe as well. So just wanted to get that one out there. And uh, apart from that, how are you? Again, yeah, as, as, as I was saying before you joined, I'm really excited to talk about season three, which I think, uh, one, I'm just glad we're getting a third season because um, I love the book, really into the show, um, especially where we left off in season two with finally getting to Lakeside. Uh, I guess on that note, um, for those who haven't read the book, um, what makes the sort of the Lakeside storyline so exciting and why? Because I think that's something, that's something people have talked about since season one. Um, why, what, I guess, why is that such an exciting thing to get to? to, get to? Um, it's actually my favorite part of the book, Neil Gaiman's book that, that came out 18 years ago. Um, it's where the story really does flip on its head and becomes a completely different vehicle for Shadow um, to really find himself. You know, um, we're going to have lots of the, the fantastic characters returning in, in you know, uh, uh, Laura, Bilquis, uh, Salim, uh, Tech Boy, and uh, obviously Wednesday and, Sh and Shadow. But we, it's, it's where you, you kind of get stuck in this kind of really strange Twin Peaks kind of town. It's, it's a really different feel. Um, and without giving too much away, there's, there's a lot of secrets kind of going on that Shadows almost becomes involved in a, in a murder mystery. Um, so not, as, not only is he trying to find himself and discover who he is now that he's found out that, you know, he's, he's at the beginning of his own kind of Superman story where he's just realized that, you know, Clark Kent uh, is, is an alien and he, has, he, he, he may have some powers. So he's really trying to harness that power, discover what that power is, discover who he is on top of trying to figure out the mystery that, of, of this small town called Lakeside. And just for the fans, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop in the comments. I'll try to get to them. Uh, I mean, with this Lakeside, because I, I know with this new setting, we meet also some, there are some new characters that come into the mix. Who are some of the new people that we'll meet this season in, 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 in Lakeside? I mean, the whole show is, as, as, as the show as a whole has been really exciting this year. Chick Eggley's come in and just blown this apart. Him and Neil Gaiman have been working closely together with the writing team. And it is literally the most diverse cast we've had in all three seasons. Um, not more so than the character World, who is not only portrayed by Crispin Glover, who I love and has been prominent throughout the first two seasons, but he is now joined by... Uh, Dominique Jackson and Danny Trejo, um, who all kind of form different identities of Mr. and Miss World, um, which is a very in interesting kind of thread in the story, along with uh, with Tech Boy. But in the, in Lakeside, we get to welcome a whole new cast of uh, fantastic talent that I've enjoyed, you know, watching growing up. I think um, on my first day, I ran into uh, Eric Johnson, who plays Chad Mulligan, who's a famous character from the book. And I told him how excited I was because I loved him in Smallville. Same. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you brought like that. I straight up squeed. I fangirled massively. And he is the funniest, nicest dude you will ever meet. Like, you know, they say, don't meet your idols. No, I met my idol and, and I wasn't even ashamed of it. He was, he was like, like he was, he was getting the tour and it was like, this is our lead. Ricky Woods will play Shadow Moon. I'm like, oh my God, you were amazing in Smallville. <laughs> So, um, he's fantastic, and he does an incredible job this season, along with uh, some other characters. Julius Sweeney is hilarious. 
she they they both appear in the first episode so straight away we're straight into the new lakeside story um american gods never holds back uh we open the season with episode one which really does explode in true american gods fashion um and we meet these characters in lakeside so judas sweeney will play hinselman uh another famous character in the book and i believe she's she's along the lines of uh when i worked with jennifer coolidge um someone who is so comedically hilarious they shouldn't have a script. They should just be let loose and just go ahead because her ad-libbing was phenomenal, an absolute joy to work with. Um, and then Marguerite Olsen, uh, Layla Lauren. Um, again, another incredible actress who plays Marguerite Olsen. And I literally just watched uh, the first couple of episodes of season three. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm very excited, by the way. It is awesome. But I'm getting very kind of sexy, awesome, cool, Sarah Connor vibes, you know that, that I didn't notice at the time, but when uh, watching it, you know, watching it back as as a fan, you know, it she she really does bring so much power and and, and intensity to that role, um, as do all our characters, you know. It, it's it really is fun, kind of watching the old characters come back. You know, Bill Quist's entrance is fantastic. Tech Boys, uh, Emily's is hilarious as always. She's phenomenal, and then. Wednesday, um, I think we've seen in some of the stars' promos, stage diving. You've got, you know, you've got Ian McShane's stage diving to look forward to. So uh, I'll leave that with you to entice the viewers. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess on the subject of, of Wednesday, I mean, I think the last time we checked in with, uh, with Shadow, like, he had just had this epiphany about Wednesday being his father, which is a big reveal in the book. It's happening early, um, earlier than in the book on the show, though. Um, as much as you can tease, uh, how has that sort of uh, affected their relationship in, um, in this new season? This is the biggest thing. And then we left season two with the, the, the huge uh, finale where Shadow finally realizes that Wednesday is his father. Shadow's gone throughout his life with plenty of uh, heartache and trauma. He grew up without a father. He grew up without friends. He, his mother passed away from cancer when he was 15. He's been through the mill. To find out your father was around the whole time and as a god, he's not just working in the local store or you didn't just stumble across him. He's known you've existed this whole time. So we're going to get some, some very uh, kind of uh, interesting and, and tense dynamics between the two. You know, he's, 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 he's found out his father was there the whole time and could have reached out at any time. Um, he's also spending, uh, during the, there's been a time jump between season two and three, He's tried to escape. Um, and even when we first see Shadow, you'll see his physical appearance is completely different. He's grown his hair out, his beard. He's hiding from the police. He's hiding from the FBI. You know, he's hiding from the gods. He just wants no more of it. He doesn't want to speak or see Wednesday. He doesn't want to know about any of the gods. He's intrigued and curious about his own kind of abilities and what that may mean for him uh, going forward. But he's trying to disappear. He really is trying to... Um, move forward without Wednesday in his life. I think he's kind of made that choice to kind of find himself before he can kind of address that situation. But uh, as Wednesday puts it to him in the first episode, when he, they finally come uh, across paths, destiny will always find you and you can hide for as long as you want, but eventually um, you're gonna have to cross that bridge. Some of the comments, uh, a lot of hundred fans in here, so. <laughs> I know someone asked when the new season will be released. I'm guessing, do you have an idea of that? <laughs> um, I, do, I just got excited that I've just seen the first two episodes. I've been chomping at the bit, yelling at like Fremantle and Stars to say, give me episode three. Like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm an addict. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, like, I'm even wearing my, my Welcome to Lakeside t-shirt. You, you're seeing this? Nice, swag. I'm, I'm just saying there's a, there's a little bit of American God swag out there, ladies and gentlemen. Get yourselves involved. Um, so we're not sure, so sure yet. I know that there's, I think I finished most of the, the ADR, which is the, the, the sound and stuff like that. The special effects are still kind of going in. Um, so we're not too sure wh wh when it's coming out, it, but with the campaign starting, it means it's very close, the press campaign. So the fact that I'm here now talking to you means, uh, it's well and truly on its way. And I think we're probably going to be announcing very soon when, uh, the, the, the final, the, the, the official premiere will be. Um, but that's very exciting. And like I say, having seen the first two episodes, 
I'm already hungry for more. And I know what goes on. So uh, that bodes well. As to where can they get that shirt? Is that, is that ready available or is that a exclusive? It, it, it is an exclusive, but exclusive to the show. There will be available in time. Um, I can't say just yet. I'm just showcasing. I'm, I'm, I'm a mere model. I'm a mere <laughs> model. For, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a show pimp. Basically, I love my show so much that I, I, I basically haul myself out in every way I can. And apparel, American Gods apparel is, is today's. But yeah, they will be able to get hold of this eventually. And on the note of the sort of the promotional campaign start, I mean, you guys are coming to New York Comic Con uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Can you, I guess, can you share who will be on the panel with you? Um, I'm not sure. Am I allowed to, to share who, who's on the panel with me? You are. <laughs> <laughs> this is see this is the fun thing about like this is the first thing we've done okay so you this is it, the official kind of cherry popping of uh, american gods season three uh press campaign so i'm really nervous about what i'm allowed to say or not so um but officially yeah we will be at new york comic con which is uh gonna be virtual you're able to to to, to see that online everyone uh, from the safety of your own homes but uh, we will have the, the wonderful uh, Emily Browning. We will have uh, Yatiri Badaki, Bruce Langley, Amid, uh, Amid Abtahi. Uh, I believe one of our new awesome characters, Ashley Reyes, who plays Cordelia in, in season three. I love the chemistry between Shadow and Cordelia. Uh, watch out for her uh, at the beginning of the show. She's, she's a, a new character coming in and it's been absolutely fantastic. And then uh, I believe the God's father himself, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Neil Gaiman. I bow every time I say his name because he is that incredible. I mean, I'm moderating the panel and I'm very like, I'm very nervous to have Neil Gaiman on the panel just because he's written so many things I love and he's just a brilliant man. Literally, I, one of the biggest questions, the, mo the most popular questions I get is what is Neil Gaiman like? You do not need to worry. You do not need to be nervous. This guy is the most intellectual, hilarious, funny, but humble, grateful guy in the world. You know, he's done so much, but he makes you feel so special. Every single, single individual, whether it's his cast, his crew, his writers, fans, you know, his work colleagues. He's an incredible human being, and I could listen to him all day. You're going to have a great time. He's always got so much to, to, to talk about and to say. And... Uh, I'm happy to sit there quiet for the whole panel and just listen to, to the, the God's Father speak. Um, he really is a, an incredible human being, and I feel very honored that I get to kind of bring his story off the page. What has been in the past sort of three years, or actually probably longer work on the show, but three seasons at least, what has been sort of the best piece of sort of advice or wisdom you've gotten from him? And I guess in, in, in talking to him. I think it's got to be... Um, his calming influence, to be quite honest, because when you're bringing uh, f fiction to, to screen, when you're bringing up such a well-loved adaptation to screen, there's so much pressure to get it right, to not ruin people's imagination, their love, that they've had this in their minds and everyone's mind is individual for 18 years. You know, who was their shadow? Who was their Wednesday, their Laura? Um, and you know, when you, when you, when you come to, to Neil Gaiman, and this has all come from his mind, the, the, the original creator, when he sits you down and says, this is your character now. You know, you know them better than I do. You've lived him for so long. Just do you. You're doing a great job. You know, um, I just recently spoke to, to Chick Egley and Neil Gaiman, and, you know, I teared up a little bit because they both kind of said um, how great season three was going, uh, and how it looked and and you know i don't want to go into details but they said some really wonderful things about me and to know you're doing a good job in the eyes of your creators um it's a real honor you know and and it's it's a real relief that you're you know you're doing it right um because if he wasn't happy he would, he'd, he'd probably tell you uh, <laughs> so um <clears throat> to get, kind of get the, the thumbs up from the man who wrote american gods originally um, is a, it, for me personally, is an incredible achievement. I feel very honored and humble. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of guy he is, but it was just merely that, that calming hand on the shoulder is saying, Shadow Moon's your character now, you know? Take him, t take him where you want. And, uh, 
Um, oh, sorry. And someone asked, sorry, uh, <clears throat> I lost the question. All right. Yeah, I think someone asked, what has been your favorite season so far of, of American Gods? This always, this always sounds like press talk. Uh, because I'm going to say season three, this season. Um, and it's, it's, but it's not, you know, I loved season one because I got to work with Brian Fuller, Michael Green, who created an incredible base foundation. They like to work with those two guys was, was, was absolutely phenomenal. And I'll never forget season one, episode one for me is quite possibly some of my favorite, possibly my favorite episode of TV that I've ever performed in. It really was fantastic. But season three also has my favorite episode of my entire American Gods career. Um, the story is just so proactive. Everyone's kind of moving in, 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 along their threads. And there's such a, an incredible feel, different feel that you get straight away with episode one. The music, I love the music. I love how it's, how it's all shot. You've still got that American Gods tone, that rich, beautiful kind of deep, tone, the, the, but the, the humor, the, the drama, the, the connections. Um, I'm looking forward to fans seeing the dynamics because there's some beautiful stuff with Shadow and Bilquis, with Shadow and Cordelia, uh, with, with Laura, um, with some comedy with Tech Boy. You know, there's, 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 there's real conversations that I'm really excited for the audience to see where you become very invested in these characters and all of a sudden, I, I feel season three is really where we kind of really have found ourselves. And Chick and Neil have kind of come up with a fantastic storyline that's going to span, you know, uh, season three into a season four, um, where you're just, you want to go along for this ride. You are invested in, in, in these characters and especially Shadow as he's kind of really finding himself, you know. In season one, as much as I love season one, I really had to play him down. I had to really bring him down because I know where he wants, where he's going to be. So I had to create that journey backwards. And so every season, season one, season two, I got to build upon him. And now season three, I get to really kind of start to get that momentum going as he starts to find himself and starts to develop his powers, his abilities, his identity, you know? And I think, you know, moving on, Shadow only gets more interesting and, and, uh, so for me, this season really was uh, really fun to kind of experience Shadow's growth, uh, both physically, mentally, his relationships with the other characters and uh, his father and his place in this war, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, it's uh, you know, this, this kind of war that Wednesday is trying to brew is, 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 is apparently coming and, and he wants Shadow to pick sides and Shadow still isn't there yet. And, um... Queen of Fire and Ashes wants to know, do you think Shadow and Salim are going to have more scenes? I'm guessing this season wants to know. Omid is pure love. One of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet. We call him superstar because he's got that Star Wars love now. You know, he's, he's, he's Mandalorian and stuff. But that just goes to show the caliber and quality of actor that we have on our show. You know, we, we really do have some fantastic people kind of coming into into this show and and Salim's story is beautiful you know he he, he was kind of um oh I, I nearly hit a spoiler there nearly got a spoiler from me you're very good <laughs> Mr. Tensela um but he's he really is uh along a similar journey I believe with Shadow Moon he's trying to find himself because I think the interesting thing with with um I mean, the special thing about American Gods, first and foremost, is we really do shine a, a light on the beauty of every different religion, race, culture, gender. You know, we, we, we try to show how there's beauty in everything. And, you know, everyone's kind of trying to take that same journey, you know, get through it each day. And um, here we have Salim, who's in love with a god. But yet his faith tells him that other gods don't exist which is a huge contradiction. And what does that do for a, for a, a man, a believer's psyche? You know, he's, he's in love with someone that basically contradicts his whole belief. Um, and so uh, also being um, gay, he's, he, he really has an incredible journey of, of, of 
you know, trying to find himself as well this season. You know, I, I guess um, if I had a key word to describe this season for many of the characters, it's discovery. You know, Shadow's trying to discover who he is. Tech Boy, Bilquis, Laura, um, you know, and, and obviously Celine. Um, he really is kind of taking control of his own story uh, this year. And Omid, who is one of the, the, the best actors I've, I've had the opportunity to work with, really kind of, um, really gets the shine this season. And uh, I never get to work as much as I want to with, with Omid, but uh, we still get to have our dinners up in Toronto and there will be scenes. There will be scenes, but um, Shadow is very much on his own in Lakeside. I really do get to kind of play with, with Eric and Julia and Leela um, in Lakeside. So, you know, it, it really does follow the book this season. I think fans of Neil Gaiman's book will really, they'll hear kind of a, a lot of quotes from the book. They'll see a lot of moments, you know, Sam Crow coming back, the incredible Devery Jacobs. So um, fans will really enjoy the, the, you know, kind of the similarity to, to where we are in the story. I absolutely love Lakeside in the book and I was looking forward to this section of the show and it didn't disappoint, you know, Chick, his writing team, Neil, they really kind of, uh, built a, a fantastic season. Um, and again, without spoiling too much, for me, the season finale, w without wishing the whole season away straight away, I mean, you, you know, <laughs> seen season one, you haven't seen the trailers yet. The trailers, mind blown. But the season finale of season three is the best of all three seasons by far. When I read the script, it blew my mind. I was so excited. For the final episode, wow. I'm really excited for fans to kind of see that and, and see that hunger and, and mind-blowing kind of reaction that the fans will no doubt have, as I did. Each season they've had, but each finale has been very different. So I honestly, again, I, I have no idea what to expect from this one now, um, given how different they've been. Uh, to wrap up, I know <laughs> there may or may not be, you may have had another sort of New York Comic Con related thing to share with, with people, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna open up what I, on, on what I was told. <laughs> Maybe you should like tell people and I'll give you the thumbs up and go, that is true. Well, there may be an opportunity for some kind of uh, uh, sort of meet and greet with the God Squad maybe or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, I am so excited. There is so much happening that it's all at different times. It's very planned and very organized and so exciting. But after our panel at New York Comic Con, there will be a meet and greet. Uh, so you'll be able to ask me personally your questions. We'll have a virtual uh, bit of fun and uh, I'll be answering all of all that's on your mind, everything American gods. Um, so uh, I believe there's a, a competition and uh, fans can kind of get the opportunity to, to uh, be a part of that. I guess what, how, I guess how do they get into this? How, how do they enter the competition? I don't know. I'm not prepared. This is written down, but it's, see the thing is it's written down but it's on the machine that I'm using for the stream. So, <laughs> so <laughs> all my info and my prep, because I didn't think this, I'm not very, I'm not tech boy. I'm not very tech savvy. It's all on this right here. So I'm doing this blind, trying to hope. Um, I know there is a question for fans to answer. And I believe it's to do with the book. And it's to do with a certain date. What date does Shadow choose? And the Chancellor's going to help me out. I think, I guess, um, just to answer, I think, I believe you just have to, if uh, I'm trying to pull it up right now. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I think, I think to answer, you have to DM the American Gods account, if I remember correctly. So. Yep, DM uh, the American Gods account, and it's what, what, oh, what is it? It's what date does Shadow choose for the clunker to fall through the ice? 
That is the question. And uh, DM the American Gods account. Um, and we'll be picking some lucky fans to have a personal meet and greet uh, with yours truly. Um, and there may be some more surprises uh, on the day as well. Uh, Ricky, thank you so, so much for joining us after this. I'm looking forward to talking to you again for the panel. And um, stay safe and healthy in LA, and we'll talk soon. And thank you, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you very much, buddy. Have a good one. You too.